This is a tutorial series on Flutter and Flame where you learn how to build Flutter and Flame games. What is Flutter? What is Dart? What is Flame? Will all be explained here. We're going to use these kind of a game type of structure so that you get motivated, you have a lot of fun, and you'll keep up with the practice as you learn to program. In addition to iOS, Android, Linux desktop, Windows desktop, Mac desktop. You can also put this thing on a web page. This is on GitHub pages. And you can show your friends this way, show your family, your relatives. You could use different graphics here to get your friends involved as well too. You will need a sprite sheet. The one that I'm using, I'll have in my GitHub repository. You can also just go to someplace like itch.io and look under the game assets here. And then there's a, you could sort by free and get an asset pack. You'll need a sprite animation sheet and a series of backgrounds. I bought this sprite pack from Humble Bundle. So I'm just be using these graphics like this, not as a tile, not using a tiled map editor. And for the handheld characters, I'm using, so this is the, the set I'm working with, but each one of these things, so for example, Bobu, the, horror, the hero of our story here, he's in this type of format where there's eight sets of Bobu. for the different positions of left, right, running, running right, running left, going up the screen, going down the screen. Before we can start building the mobile apps, you, you first have to understand the concept that the games we're gonna be making are written in a language called Dart. So Dart is an object-oriented language. It's developed by Google and you can use it to build apps that runs on the web, mobile devices like an iPhone or Android phone, the native desktop platforms on Mac, Linux, or Windows. It's Dart is bundled with Flutter. So when you install Flutter, so if you go to flutter.dev and you install it, uh, it's, it's bundled with Flutter. And so we'll take a look at that. And the Dart packages are available on pub.dev. So when you go to the Flutter site, you'll scroll around and okay, there's get started. And so you want to get started. So I'm going to get started on Linux and you can install it different ways. I just downloaded this right here and I opened it up. All right. So once you install Flutter and if, you don't know how to install Flutter. I think if you just search on Google, you'll find a ton of videos. The main thing is that I have Dart installed with Flutter. I'm using Dart version 2.19, which is different from the Flutter version. So I'll put my, I'll make a directory of lib and Let's open this up here. So I'm using VS Code of Dart and Flutter extensions installed. So you can also go to the VS Code extensions and there's Dart. And I also have Flutter installed here. We have an empty directory, just a single folder called lib. In lib, I'm going to do main.dart. It's method main. So the control back tick open up the terminal window at the bottom of VS Code. And in lib, you can run now run this program that we're building. It's gonna print hello world. 
So if you want to set up a loop here, So this is a for loop. It's going to loop through it 10 times. Um, starting with 0 and going up to 10. So if we run it again, we'll have 10 hello worlds. We use string interpolation here. And I'll run it again. OK. So 0 through 9 is 10. It's going to stop before it gets to 10. So you could make a, a method or maybe run tutorial app. And Flutter has this run app, but it's what I'm trying to illustrate is that this thing is just a method. To use packages with the Dart language here, or packages or other libraries. Uh, we're going to use this pub.dev. In order to use this, we need to set up the pubspec.yaml files. It's a configuration file that will, it saves the packages that, the, the location of the packages that you want to use in your program. One of the dark packages we're going to want to use is actually Flutter. Just to recap the points, Dart's a language. You can use it to write applications by itself. It's developed by Google and it's bundled with Flutter. And we can get these Dart packages on pub.dev. So let's go at Google. Google's Flutter. It's open source UI toolkit for these buttons and sliders. And it's developed also by Google. So you can have some confidence that's going to be around for a while. Flutter right now is more popular than React Native. Uh, barely more popular, but it's been really growing quite rapidly. And I think it was because of the nice workflow. So how do you use Flutter? Well, so this is just a sample one. Flutter actually comes with a method here called run app. But in order to use it, we're going to have to set up the pubspec.yaml. And the basics of the pubspec.yaml, normally this is automatically created for you but I'm showing it to you step by step so you have a better understanding. So we'll call ours Bobo Bobu underscore tutorial. And the description will be example of using the flame game engine for animation. We'll go publish to none because we don't want to publish it to the external repository and environment SDK and the Dart version I'm using is 2.19 greater than or equal to 2.19.4 and less than 3.0.0 dependencies flutter and the SDK will be flutter So now in the main method here, so there's only this one line here right now, there's nothing above it. 
that line one, I'm going to do run app, uh, have an auto import here for Flutter. And the run app is going to require a widget. So I'll, I'll pass it the material app here. So these two things are built into Flutter. Run app is from Flutter. I just moused over it. It's from the Flutter package. And material app is also from the Flutter package. We need the Flutter tool. I already have Flutter installed here. We have to enable a platform. So I'm just going to enable Linux right now. Uh, maybe I'll also enable Android. I'm going to do dot because it's already in this one folder. Normally you do Flutter create and then the name of the package. That's for a, a brand new project, but we're going step by step here so you can understand it in a bit more detail. So it's created a bunch of files here. And most of these don't affect the workflow, right? So for example, the get ignore, it's only for GitHub and the uh, this type of like pubspec.yaml, normally it's, it's a lot longer when you create it. Also the main.dart is usually quite a bit longer, but um, we're keeping it very short so you can understand what's happening here. At this point I'm gonna quit VS Code. So I'm gonna fully quit it and I'm gonna restart it here so that it, it will read in the new configuration which is now set up for Flutter. So we have our super basic application here and we can now build a Linux desktop application. It's all black, very basic. I'm going to stop it here and we can build our mobile app. So I'll start up a Android emulator. It's a Pixel 4 I think and it's pretty big. So I'll, we'll run it, a very simple app on Android. And now we have our very basic Flutter application on Android. So Material app, you can pass it a property home. It can also pass it something called a scaffold. And the scaffold can have a body where you could pass it a number of things, such as a um, maybe a piece of text here. Call it uh, start the game. So it's right up here and it's not super visible. So we have a very simple um, app bar right here. It's, you can access it from the scaffold and there's a piece of text here and we could easily change this text to apply some type of style. Make the font size bigger. And we could do the same thing here. We can rapidly build out the application uh, this way. So I'm going to hit, click on text, although I'll go extract widget here. 
we'll call it uh, my app. It automatically created this section here and the code's getting longer, but very, very quick. So I'm doing a hot restart here. Do the light bulb, we could wrap it in a column. And we could have a button here. And the material has a set of buttons already installed. And to use the beautiful material icons, you just have to specify uses material design to true. So we could make it bigger. All right, so that should give you an idea of what Flutter is. Um, the buttons, there's sliders, a whole bunch of stuff, easy to put images in there. The workflow is great. You saw the hot restart and the reload. So you can just see it changes very quickly, super fast to build a mobile app. We're gonna get to Flame. So it's a 2D game engine. It's developed by the open source community. And there's an awesome community here. They also have awesome examples here. So on the side here, you can see what Flame can do. And the source code for these examples are also available. So you can quickly just go to these examples and figure out what Flame can do for you. It's basically this game loop and there's other methods like collision detection. So we just show you in code so that you can understand very clearly what Flame is. So we'll delete our Flutter app right here. And we'll take it down all the way to the run app here. So we're back to just this section here. And run app does require some type of widget here. We're going to use the game widget. Game widget is from Flame. I'm going to use control need to first install it. So I go flutter pub add flame. And I now have this flame dependency in here. So I have the game widget, which is going to require a game. And the game will be So I named this little ghost character Bobu for kind of scary like Boo, Bobu game. Extends flame game. We need to import it. So we have this flame game it has not been imported. We're gonna go Bobu game. So the main point here, instead of the material app that you're normally using, we're using this game widget here. All right, so let's reload the hot restart the application. It's all black. 
So this is our current code base for our mobile app right now. To enable the assets on Flutter, we have to go into the pubspec.yaml. Normally this is already set up for you, but we are doing it from the real, the real basics here. So it's the location of where you want the assets to be. So I'm going to create a new subfolder system, assets, images, and then we'll just copy the directory here, assets, images. And I'll do flutter pub get again. So to place a graphic or character graphic on the screen, you need to have a graphic. So I'm just going to use a pack I have from Humble Bundle. I'm going to use this number 60 character here. You can get free graphics from places like itch.io or DeviantArt, many other places. So the character, I'm going to grab this one here. My name for the character is Bobu. Let's see. I want to place him in the asset such images. Okay, then I'm going to rename him to Bobu Solo. And he's very small. He's only a 32 by 32 pixels. So Flame has a built-in onload method. I do code completion. This will load the assets or it will, it will start right when the game starts here. And I will load Boo in. First I'll use something called a sprite component. So the, ver the variable type is sprite component. You could use a var which is more common. I'll call it Bobu, and we're going to instantiate Bobu here. So this is from Flame, and it's for a graphic or a sprite that moves around the screen usually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add Bobu to the screen. But we first need to assign Bubu a sprite. So I'm using a cascade operator, which is two dots here. So it's a property of the sprite component Bubu. I'm going to load a sprite here. And this will be the name of the file, which is Bubu solo.png. This is red here because we need to specify async. So async IO, async and await, it just waits till this thing has loaded. And we need to specify a size. So I'll do a cascade operate again. I'll go dot dot size equal and size in flame is based on a, a set of vector components. So I'll go um, 128 here. Right now it looks like this. So we're adding Bobu. So Sprite is this graphics file here that we just moved in. It's just a simple PNG file and we're assigning it a size. So let's do a hot restart. And we have Bobo, Bobu right there. We can also assign him a starting position with the property position. is vector 2 x and y coordinate and we'll have him be at 0 but uh, we'll push him down a bit 200 and we'll just delete the comma right there to have the cascade it's equivalent to bobu dot sprite bobu dot size bobu dot position and he'll be hopefully push down a bit right there. 
there's an update method as I mentioned there's a game loop in flame which is uh, update So X is horizontal, Y is vertical. We can make Babu move. It's going through 60 times a second, so. And there goes Babu. So we're going to be building up our our backgrounds here. We'll create a subfolder in images. We'll call it World. And then also we'll create one for actors. And we'll specify this in the pubspec.yaml. world and actors and I'm going to move Babu into actors let's make sure that he oh, he's actually now in afters. Just had to hot or completely stop the game and I restarted it. And we're going to populate our world here. So I have these graphics from Humble Bundle. You can put any type of background you want in the world. And let's call this one kitchen whoops right, kitchen and we'll add the kitchen in so we're using this type of convention here and so Bobu we'll just call it kitchen we now have an empty graphic and we'll add it in above the babu so it's layered the higher it is the lower the layer is and it will be kitchen we'll do dot dot for the cascade operator sprite we'll follow the same convention await load sprite and it'll be world kitchen dot png. We're gonna do something a little different here for the size. We'll assign the size to the size of the game. So this size here is from the flame game system and it's the size of the full screen. Okay, it's a little distorted because it's meant to be in landscape mode, so I'm going to switch it. Let's go to the top here, above the run app. So I'll go widget flutter binding and short initialize to make sure that the game engine has started before the run app here. And then we'll use flame. Control dot import flame flame dot dart right there device which is built into flame and we'll go full screen whoops dot device dot set landscape Then I will completely stop the game and I'll restart it. Okay, we have Bobo looking pretty good on the Android emulator here. 
I'm going to filter out the DEGL, which is uh, it's just for the graphics of the emulator. And Babu has a anchor property. So I'm going to set it to be the center of Babu. And we'll move Babu only if hopefully when he gets to the right side of the screen he will stop He stopped, very good. Code for the Babu tutorial, part one, is on GitHub. And I'll place the additional lessons in the future, 020304, and it'll probably go on for a while. So subscribe to the channel to so get updates of the future lessons. Babu is actually a kind of a, a tester so we can test a different sprite to see what we want in our character. So we have the, the dog here, the cat here, and there's some rudimentary, there's a gate here, so the background can change. We have this, I don't know, a guy with a round head, popsicle, a cactus. There's some type of candy here. Thanks for joining us on our journey to learn both Flutter and Flame. Learning is meant to be fun, so the most important thing is that you have a good time and I think by having fun you'll motivate yourself to keep up the practice and by practice you'll eventually develop the skills. So see you again in the next video and have a great day.